A flat earth easily debunked. First of all, I want to um, say that um, for people that believe in a flat earth, I don't hold anything against them at all. We do live in a world that's filled with lies. And when people start to see through those lies, um, it's, it's, all, it's good to start questioning things. We really live in a world where we need to question everything. And um, a flat earth is something that people may, I think, can jump to sometimes just not really thinking carefully about it. Um, there's people that even claim that the Bible teach a flat earth. The Bible talks, of course, about the four corners of the earth and the ends of the earth, different things like that. But there's nowhere in the Bible where the Bible plainly says the earth is flat at all. And the Bible actually talks about God sitting on the circle of the earth and he hangs the earth on nothing. So there's very much stuff that indicates that the earth is, is round. It's a globe. And, but I'm going to cover some more very important stuff as this video progresses that, that I believe totally demolishes any possibility that the earth could be flat. Um, we do live in a world where there are many conspiracies and good reasons to, to look into stuff. We've got things like Waco. I've watched vid a video called Waco, The Rules of Engagement, which totally turned on its head what I had heard from the news media. Um, the Oklahoma City bomb bombing. I definitely don't believe that building was brought down by a truck blowing up outside the building. That's impossible. We've got 9-11. Again, the airplanes crashed into the top of the buildings. I believe there's good reason to doubt that those planes all by themselves brought down the buildings. There's, I think the government very well could be involved in conspiracies with all of that stuff. Um, so, And I certainly don't want you to believe and trust everything I say either. Jeremiah 17, 5, God says, Thus saith the Lord, cursed is the man that trusts in man, and makes flesh his arm, and whose heart departs from the Lord. So trust in God, trust in the Bible, don't trust in me. But I want to show from the Bible why I do believe that, um, that we definitely have a global earth, but um, another thing, too, I, I do believe the Bible very clearly teaches a geocentric universe um, that the earth is not moving. The earth isn't spinning. We're not going around the sun. I don't believe that for a second. And I do believe that the Bible very clearly indicates that we have a geocentric universe. Um, we find in Psalm 19 verses 4 through 6 um, their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and a circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. This very clearly is indicating that the sun is moving, the earth is not. Um, Psalm 93 verse 1, um, The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty, the Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself, the world also is established that it cannot be moved. And I believe very definitely this is talking about the earth. Also, I do have a video on geocentricity that will go into more detail with that. If you, Why I certainly believe that the earth is the center of the universe and the sun, moon, stars, all of it to some degree is going around the earth, the sun and moon literally going around the earth basically daily, and the stars and stuff like that sort of orbiting the earth every year or so. Um, 
But now I want to really look at the at why I believe that there's no possible way that we have a flat earth. Psalm 103 verse 12 says this, As far as the east is from the west, so so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Now, at first glance, that might not seem like much of anything, but when you really give this some thought, I believe that a flat earth becomes destroyed. Here is a paper, which of course is flat, and I've got north, south, east, and west on the paper. Um, if the earth was flat, you could go north, and to the end of the earth, north. You'd never go any, you could head north and come to an end. You could head south and come to an end. You could head, head east and come to an end. You could go west and come to an end. Um, you should find ends of the earth. The earth should end, it should stop. But what we really find is a globe. If you head north especially, far enough, you'll be headed south, and your compass will start pointing south. You'll reach a point headed north where your compass will no longer be pointing north. You, you'll be headed south if you keep going that same direction, because the north ends up heading south, and the same with south. If you go far enough, your compass will start pointing north because you'll have crossed the South Pole. And I believe that this obliterates any flat earth idea, and I believe it's very easy that people can do this test. If you think the earth is flat, get in a boat, a plane, anything you want, head north. If your compass ever points anything other than north, I believe that's a clear indication we're on a globe. But this verse is interesting because at church we've talked a lot of times that it's a good thing that God said as far as the east is from the west. Because if it was as far as the north is from the south, if, you, if you're on this globe and you head north, once you get really close to the North Pole, you'll reach a point where the north is actually really close to the compass starting to point south. Um, you know, and it, I mean, it always points north, but you'll end up heading south as you cross the North Pole. And the same with south. If you're headed south, it'll eventually be pointing north because you'll cross the South Pole and be heading north. But you can go east for forever, you could circle the earth and go around and around and around and around and still be going east. The same with west. You could go west for forever. And God says in this verse that he separated our sin as far as the east is from the west. And of course, they're opposite directions. You can't get further from the east than the west. When I mean the east and the west are exact opposites and they never end up switching around. On our planet though, with a north seeking compass, your compass will switch directions eventually and you'll be headed south if you're headed north originally and go far enough. So I wanted to point that out. Um, another thing, um, you know, we live in a world where everything does need questioned. I'm all for the truth. Jesus taught in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's only three possibilities for who Jesus was making a statement like that. He was either a flat-out liar, or he was definitely a lunatic, or he was the Lord God Almighty in human flesh, and he was what he claimed to be. And I most certainly believe that he was what he said he was, the way, the truth, the life. He's the way to heaven. No one goes to the Father but through him. Um, another thing I wanted to look at, um, I know a lot of people are concerned that we've never been to the moon and that NASA has lied to people. 
And I don't doubt for a moment that NASA has lied about all sorts of different things, and I believe that they still lie about all sorts of things. But I do believe that we really have landed men on the moon. I do believe that. Now, I'm more than willing to examine evidence if somebody has any real credible evidence. But we had actual guys that were reported to go to the moon. And if people really believe the Earth is flat, Everybody knows it's wrong to lie, and God specifically said it's one of the commandments, thou shall not lie. Now, the Bible does say, let God be true, but every man a liar. So, I mean, we all ultimately tell a lie in our life, but we do know it's wrong if we do lie to lie. And if these men that had supposedly gone to the moon hadn't really gone to the moon, they'd be having to live with that lie their entire life. And I believe that we would have at least somebody sometime say, look, everything with NASA is a total hoax and come out on video or whatever and, and tell people, you know, this is all wrong. It's bogus. It's nonsense. It never happened. But the interesting thing to me, you know, it's the Bible that we get morals from and morality from. And, of course, your worldview is going to determine what you're going to even do with this video. Because we interpret evidence in light of our worldview and in light of what we pre already have determined that we believe. We have certain things that we believe, and based off of what we believe, we judge the evidence. Um, evolutionists and creationists don't have different evidence. It's the exact same evidence, but it gets interpreted in light of a person's worldview. And so I would challenge anybody watching this to watch a video right here on YouTube by Jason Lyle called The Ultimate Proof of Creation, where he discusses a lot more about this and demonstrates that any worldview, apart from a biblical worldview, blows itself up. And the Bible actually has to be true for simple things like morality and things like that to even exist. Because if there is no God and the Bible isn't true, why would people even think things are right or wrong? There would be no such thing as right or wrong if there wasn't God who had laid down that there is things that are right and wrong, and he's wrote it in everybody's heart. That's why even atheists don't walk around murdering people and stuff like that. They know in their heart of hearts that they're lying to themselves, and there is a God, they've got a conscience, and they know it's wrong to steal, kill, lie, and all of that. Now, being an atheist, they're more likely to do some of those things, but they still have their conscience that wars against that. Um, so when it comes to a global Earth, I, I do believe that we've been to space. I do believe that there's thousands of satellites in space. Our cell phones are all based off of satellite communication in space. I was in the Army years ago, and one of my jobs was actually monitoring satellites. And we were trying to pick up signals from enemy satellites so that we'd have the ability to know what the enemies were learning from their satellites. So I most certainly believe that we've been to space and that satellites are real and, and that we've landed on the moon and things like that. And also time zones, I believe, are another very clear indicator for a round Earth. If you go far enough east or west, your time zone is going to change. And I don't, I don't know exactly how many time zones there are. I, think, I guess there's about 24 time zones if you go clear around the Earth, but only so many that have land mass on them. I do know I was stationed in Sinop, Turkey in the Army, and there my time was nearly 12 hours different than my time in Utah was, which is where my mom was, and I'd make calls to her from time to time. But anyway, I just wanted to shoot this video because I do believe that these are very good reasons to reject any ideas that the Earth may be flat, but I would strongly suggest that everybody ought to question everything all the time. Um, God says in the Bible that his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We need to learn what we can learn, and we need to seek the truth. And the truth is Jesus. He said that in John 14, verse 6. 
and also anybody that isn't saved, you need to really look at John chapter 3 and read that whole chapter. It, it explains very clearly what has to happen for a person to be saved and to know they're going to heaven when they die. But thank you very much for your time.